Smartcast. You're listening to a Hindustan Times production brought to you by HD Smartcast. Hello. These are the top news for the day. This February was the hottest in India since 1901, the earliest year for which data is available, with maximum temperatures touching 29.54 degrees Celsius, monthly national average. The five warmest Februarys in India have all been in the last 14 years, indicating the impact of the climate crisis. Even in terms of minimum temperatures, the month was the fifth warmest since 1901. The warmest was February 2016. The average maximum or day temperature was 1.73 degrees Celsius, degrees Celsius, above normal over the country, and average minimum temperature 0.81 degrees Celsius above normal. The India Meteorological Department said on Tuesday, "We are seeing that progressively over the years, winter period is getting shorter but more intense and the summer time is becoming more grueling as well as more prolonged. While local factors do play a role, climate change is also impacting temperature recordings. These extreme weather recordings are impacting urban centers the most," said Mohesh Palavat, Vice President, Meteorology and Climate Change, Skymet Weather Services. Russian Foreign Ministry on Tuesday said that the country's Foreign Minister Sergey Lavrov and India's External Affairs Minister S. Jijinko will touch on a number of regional topics, including developments in Ukraine during Lavrov's visit to India for the G20. As part of the visit's bilateral events, Russian Foreign Minister Sergey Lavrov and Indian Foreign Minister Swaraminiam Jijinko will discuss ways to further advance cooperation in key areas. as well as coordinate the schedule of upcoming contacts the main thematic blocks include trade investment transport and logistics cooperation the use of national currencies in mutual settlements and promising projects in the energy sector the ministers will exchange views on topical international matters including interaction under india's sco chairmanship and g20 presidency as well as coordination of approaches in the un brics and ric They will also touch on a number of regional topics including the creation of security architecture in the Asia Pacific region, the current state of Afghanistan and developments in Ukraine. It added, Russia supports India's G20 presidency in its commitment to promote a unifying agenda that will restore confidence in multilateral diplomacy and prevent the fragmentation of the global economy, as per the statement. We share the relevance of India's stated priorities, ensuring inclusive and sustainable economic growth, accelerating progress towards the achievement of sustainable development goals, reforming multilateral institutions, digital modernization, and increasing women's economic engagement, the statement read. The Supreme Court has directed to provide the highest level Z+ security to industrialist Mukesh Ambani and his family members all across India and abroad. A bench of justices Krishna Murari and Nasandu in Amanullah said on Monday it was of considered opinion that if there is a security threat the security cover cannot be restricted to a particular area or place of stay highest z security cover provided to respondent numbers 2 to 6 ambani's shall be available all across india and the same is to be ensured by the state of maharashtra and ministry of home affairs highest level z security cover as per the policy of government of india be also provided while respondent numbers 2 to 6 are traveling abroad and the same shall be ensured by the ministry of home affairs the bench said the top court said the entire expenses and cost of providing z security cover to ambani's within the territory of india or abroad shall be borne by them it said that looking into the business activities of ambani's within the country as also outside the country the very purpose of providing security cover would stand frustrated if the same is restricted to a particular place or area we find that the security cover provided to the respondent numbers 2 to 6 has been the subject matter of controversy at different places and in different high courts the bench said a 32 year old indian national was shot dead by the australian police on tuesday after he allegedly stabbed a cleaner at a railway station in sydney and threatened law enforcement officers media reports said muhammad rahim tullah said ahmed who hails from tamil nadu was identified by the consulate general of india in sydney as the man who was fatally shot by the police 
Ahmed allegedly attacked a 28-year-old cleaner at the Auburn train station in Sydney on Tuesday before arriving at Auburn police station, Sydney Morning Herald newspaper quoted police officials as saying. Two police officers were leaving the police station, when they were confronted by Ahmed, who tried to attack them, the report said. A police officer fired three shots, two of which hit Ahmed in the chest. A probationary constable also used her tarshir on him, it said. Ahmed was immediately treated at the scene by paramedics and was rushed to a local hospital. But he was pronounced dead, the report said. Police officers are investigating whether mental health played a part in Ahmed stabbing the cleaner and threatening the police officers, it said. Ahmed had five previous interactions with the police, all of which were non-criminal and COVID-19 related, the report said. He was living in Australia on a bridging visa. Delhi's Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia and Senior Minister Satyendra Jain, who are both in jail facing corruption charges, resigned on Tuesday, marking the first major shake-up in the state government that is battling a slew of graft allegations. The resignations came hours after Sisodia, who was arrested by the Central Bureau of Investigation CBI, on Sunday in connection with allegations of financial irregularities in the now scrap excise policy, was denied immediate relief by the Supreme Court. Jen was arrested in May last year by the Enforcement Directorate ED, in connection with a money laundering probe. Jen, Sisodia and the Ahmadami Party AAP, have denied the charges calling it political vendetta. Several FIRs have been registered against me and Morar in the offing. They left no stone unturned to ensure that I leave you, Sisodia said in a three-page resignation letter in Hindi. Meanwhile, Delhi government officials indicated that Sisodia's 18 cabinet portfolios will be split between incumbent ministers Kailash Gahalot, who will handle eight ministries, including finance and excise, and Raj Kumar Anand who will oversee 10 ministries, including education and health. You were listening to the HD Daily News Wrap, a beta production brought to you by HD Smartcast. Please give us feedback on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at HD Smartcast or via email to podcasts at hindustantimes.com. Until next time. This was a Hindustan Times production brought to you by HD Smartcast. HD Smartcast.